If you ever have a fuel cooler fail, I'm gonna go over how that fuel system works first and how fuel travels through the fuel system um, and ends back up going to the cooler. So the cooler's on the return side of the fuel system. So let's get started on how the fuel travels through the system. All right, to start, you're gonna have your fuel line that's gonna come from the fuel water separator, maybe a Raycor someplace. The fuel line will come out of the Raycor, it will come up into the fuel filter. So this is the secondary filter. The fuel travels in and out of the fuel filter and then it exits and it goes down behind the filters and behind the fuel cooler. And it comes out over here and it goes into the high pressure pump. The high pressure pump then sends fuel out up into the high side of the fuel rail. So it goes into the fuel rail on the top of the engine the return line side coming out of all the injectors is going to come down here and it's going to go back into the fuel cooler. Fuel will then exit the fuel cooler. Okay, I got the two bolts in the back here. I got to release the clip on the bottom here to get this connection off for the fuel filter push it in same thing over here I'm going to push this tab in and then I'm going to take this filter out of the way so that filters out of the way now that filter has a bracket here with two bolts that fits over the top of it okay so that fits like this on top of it with the two bolts now that that's out of the way I can kind of let that hang let that hose hang out of the way I've already disconnected the two fuel lines back here, get them out of the way just so you can see simplicity. Take my two filters off. Okay, these don't drain, they got check valves in them, so make sure you use all the filters. All right, so I've got the one fitting out, I've got the other one I've already removed earlier, and now you have two hose clamps. I've already taken this one off out of the picture. I gotta loosen this one up, and this is where there's a bracket back here. So you can see the hose clamp back down in there. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a bracket that goes around. So over here, if I can get this into position, you can see the piece of the bracket right there. And that goes over that slot, and that bracket there goes under the hose clamp back in there. So that hose clamp has to go around that bracket when you put it back together. So once I loosen that, I can take the whole cooler right out. And I'll show you that bracket in two seconds here once I get this cooler out of the way. So I'm gonna slide that hose clamp back a little bit. I'm gonna pull that hose out and twist that out. And there's that bracket right here. So you can see that that hose clamp has to go around the hose and then around the bracket like that to hold it in position. So make sure you get the hose clamp back here when you're gonna put it back together. All right, so that's the cooler out. Reverse procedure is Slide the cooler in. I'd put it in this way as I've done it before. Take this piece and the hose clamp, slide it into position, put it over the hose, and then tighten the two hose clamps up. Make sure that your fittings are lined up here. So when I'm gonna put this cooler back in, okay, I'm gonna slide it up this way. Get this one in like this, and then line that up to make sure that you can get your hoses on, okay? And then I'm gonna work that hose onto that piece. And then I'm gonna slide the hose clamp up over that bracket and then tighten the hose clamp. So to pressure test the cooler, I needed to get some special fittings. And these adapter fittings are for the inlet that comes off the filter housing and the outlet that comes off of the return line with the pump. So I have those two fittings. I've got one here that I'm gonna put on here. Okay, and then I took another fitting, and this is a little bit of work, and I put a barbed nipple on here. So I'm gonna put one fitting between two brand new banjo washers, and I block off work underneath the two other banjo washers. And then I'm gonna take a lower unit pressure tester here, and I'm just gonna pressure test this up to five PSI. What I do is I take a bucket of water and I fill it up about halfway, and then I submerge this in a bucket of water and put it on end like that. If you see any bubbles coming out of these fittings, readjust these fittings, tighten them up so there's no air leaking out. The big thing you're looking for is if you have a ruptured cooler, what's gonna happen is that air is gonna go 
around these tubes and you will see air bubbles starting to come out of here in the bucket of water. If that's the case, then the cooler's no good and you need a new cooler. So that's how you can pressure test a fuel cooler. And these are a tube and bundle cooler, so you can see that a little bit better here. All right, so there's your two adapters that you kind of need to make up to pressure test coolers like this. All right, so I hope this helps you understand how to take the fuel cooler off of a D4, D6 diesel. Don't forget that bracket when you're going to put it back together here. That hose clamp has to go behind here to hold that cooler, and that's probably the easiest piece to miss. If you like the video, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.